Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This prayer, commonly known as our Lord's Prayer. Today in this video, we discover where the prayer is found in the Bible and why the disciples were taught to pray in that manner. Stay tuned and may the Lord bless us as we hear his word. Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray and this prayer and the reason is found in the book of Matthew chapter 6. We will read from verse 5. This is what Jesus said about praying in general. We start from verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. So the first thing that Jesus taught about prayer to his disciples is do not pray so that you can get the attention of other people as you pray, but they were supposed to go into a room and pray so that at least they can focus their attention to God. Verse 7 of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus continues, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So he was telling them, don't just use big, big words. Uh, vain repetition means you're repeating something that is of no importance, you know? So he was telling them there is a way that you can pray that does not include repeating vain, big, big words. Because he, he said the hypocrite, a hypocrite can be considered as someone who just pretends. They, they prayed and they thought they were going to be heard because of the words they were using and not so much in their faith. So we continue verses 8 of Matthew chapter 6. Jesus continues to teach the disciples and says, Be not therefore like them, for your father knows what things you need, what things you have need of before you ask him. They said, God already knows what we need even before we ask him. I know there is a place in the Bible where it's, it is written, God says, before they pray, I will answer them. And while they are still praying, I will hear them. So God already knows what we need, but it is also required of us that we ask, you know, so that it shall be given unto us. Verses 9 is where we find the famous Our Lord's Prayer. It is Jesus who taught it and he said, after he had told the disciples, do not pray with vain repetitions. No, we, we can pray in this manner. Not just using these words. He said in this manner. So let us pray. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 until 13. That is where our Lord's prayer is found. After Jesus said these words. After this manner therefore pray. Our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth. As it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen and then i'll just continue a bit we continue with verses 14 to 15 jesus continues and says about prayer for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will, you, will your father forgive your trespasses. So to me, I feel like Jesus taught us how to pray, or he taught the disciples how to pray in the manner of the Lord's Prayer, so that they don't use vain repetition. If we study the, the structure of our Lord's Prayer, it okay, starts by our Father who is in heaven, it, like it's declared, it's acknowledging that god is our father you can start by going to god as a child because you know in romans we are told we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we get to call god our father so he starts by saying our father not just my father jesus was clarifying that we have all received the spirit of adoption so when you go to pray we just call god my father our father yes we don't have to use big, great words it's called God our Father. We worship Him, we worship His name. Hallowed be your name, it's like a worship. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That before you ask God to give you something, after you, you, you pray God in His glory, 
you ask that his will be done even though there are things you need because god already knows what you seek even before you pray you ask that his will be done his will is always greater than what we could ever imagine then go go ahead and ask god for whatever you need when he says give us this day our daily bread our daily bread is whatever you need his spirit with us his favor a specific need that you may have then you go to god after you ask god after you worship god for who he is as you ask him for these things you have first of all said even though i want these things i'm please asking you first that you will be done then he says um and forgive us our debt as we forgive those who trespass again he says which means before you ask god forgive your debts you should be in a posture where you have already forgiven therefore you go tell god see i have forgiven i have forgiven those who sinned against me Please forgive me my sins. You see, in the end, in verses 14 and 15, he says, If you forgive not men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will not forgive you your trespasses. And like Jesus said in the beginning of the prayer, during prayer we should approach God as our Father. So therefore, the emphasis that as we pray, we are supposed to pray from a posture of, before we even pray, we are supposed to have forgiven others. And after we have forgiven others, for us, our sins can only be forgiven by God. So we go to God asking for our forgiveness. We ask God for his guidance. Hence, the leaders not into temptation. We you know because we can't do this life alone. After you, then we gl- we give God all the glory. We don't take the glory. It's because it ends by saying in verse 13, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. When we're finishing the prayer, our spirit our soul our bodies our tongues our voices should acknowledge that all the power belongs to god all the kingdom all the glory is giving him back all the praise because it is all due unto his name so in that manner therefore we should pray that's why uh, we should teach our children our lord's prayer and once it becomes automatic in their mind then they will know how to pray and even us even people who are older as they also pray we can we have been given a hack of how to pray without using vain repetition you know you can pray using big words but then if you have not forgiven people that trespasses then you even no matter what big word you use you would be forgiven you know you can go ask god i want this i want this and it could be not according to God's will, you know. But if you first acknowledge, please, you let your will be done. But still, my father, I need this, you know. I feel like it is a better way to pray. Yes, and then it ends by saying amen, which means let it be done. Therefore, every day you pray, our father, I hope as we pray, you pray with the knowledge of what it actually means that you're giving God back all the glory, that you're trusting in his will for our lives, that you're asking for our uh, trespasses to be forgiven because it is very important for us to keep on repenting as often as we can, you know? And in prayer, do not look at God as, yes, God is sovereign, he is mighty, you know, he's the creator of all flesh. Everything exists through him. But Jesus reminds us that you have been given the spirit of adoption, whereby we get to call God our Father. So every time when you pray, I pray that you may pray in the manner of our Lord's prayer and start with our Father. And I feel like anytime we say our Father, our spirit somehow gets replenished. Because when you when your spirit remembers that the God of all the universe is our Father, it calms our minds, our souls. As we pray, our Father, for yours is the kingdom, our Father who art in heaven, in the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.